Jimmy Hines with the Sports Animal. I know it's only been two days. What's your assessment of the quarterback so far? I've uh, been really positive. Um, for starters, everyone's going out and they're competing their butt off, not getting a bunch of misses with calling protections, calling runs as fast as we go. Our eye discipline's been really good and uh, zero turnovers so far in camp right now, which is in camp, first couple days, always have a tendency to be sloppy, especially with a new offense. Uh, guys are doing a great job getting their eyes in the right place, getting their body in the right place, and taking care of the football. Obviously, everybody wants to look at that position. Uh, but take me through kind of what Hendon Hooker got done this summer uh, mm -hmm. coming off. You know, obviously, you got to go through spring. How much improvement have you seen from maybe, you know, the end of April to now? And, and kind of, you know, where do you feel like he's at having been here for, you know, eight, nine months now? Yeah, Hendon um, has done a great job pushing. He, uh, you can see the uh, how hard he works and everything he does. Yeah, in the classroom, but he's made a bunch of adjustments. He's completely changed his body. He's big, he's fast, he's strong. And he worked his butt off on getting his mechanics where he needs to be. So not only mentally is he in the right place, but he can make all the throws that he needs to make once he's there. Um, that guy works as hard as anybody that I've been around. So he did a great job taking advantage of this summer and, and uh, getting himself an opportunity to play this fall. Yeah, Coach Golish talked in here the other day about arm strength and mm -hmm. the ability to push the ball down the field vertically. How would you assess in the passing game with your quarterbacks through two days, kind of where they are in, in, in extended plays or pushing the ball down the field? Yeah, that's that's a big part of what we do with how we play. Um, our guys do have – we have guys that can throw the ball. That's what we got here. They can put it down the field. Um, the guys that were here this spring, they have made a huge jump in actually using their lower body to drive a football instead of trying to like pull it with their arm all over the place. And you've seen their RPMs, their velocity, their distance, all of that pick up from where we got here at the start of spring football to where we are right now. Um, Joe didn't get the spring with us, but he had a great summer. And he has, a, he has a really big arm. He can put the ball down the football field, make all the throws. Joey, uh, kind of piggyback on what you said about Hendon with, with Harrison, kind of how would you assess how he's different from when you inherited him back in January, February to, to where he is now? The, the thing with Harrison is he's made a big jump mentally off the field. He was just so young when he got here. He's really worked hard to get himself to where he can call it quickly and he can, he can see the defense, recognize what he's getting. Am I getting pressure? Am I getting weak rotation, too high, single high? He's doing a much better job of processing that. When you get that, now your body follows because now you can actually get yourself in the right position. It's hard to have good body position when you have no idea what you're looking at on the front end. So he's done a great job grinding in the classroom. A little bit different than Hendon, who is a grad transfer coming in, who has a bunch of classroom experience, a bunch of game experience. He understands what he's seeing. Now he was working on the physical side of it. Harrison pushed really, really hard on the mental side of it. How would you assess the retention from spring practice with the guys through uh, two days? Really good. That was actually uh, the first thing we said coming off the field yesterday. We didn't have to talk to guys about splits, alignments, formations, routes. Guys came out here. Even the guys that got here um, in May or June as grad transfers or transfer ins, these guys have been extremely locked in, dedicated to what we're trying to do this fall. So we haven't had busts and all that type of stuff all over the field. It's been great to watch. Obviously, you know, you want somebody that can make all the throws, yep. that understands it mentally. But how important is the component as a former player yourself of someone who, you know, has the eye of the team that leads, that, you know, the, the, that the teammates believe in, that type yeah. of thing? That's huge. And it's one of the most important factors of a quarterback. And that's one of the things that, as a coach, you can try to help guys get there. But that's something that they have to take over themselves. A lot of that comes from what the guys see out on the field, what they see in the weight room, what they see in the meeting room, who's in here, who's not, who's just going through the motions, and who's giving us a chance to go win on Saturdays. Guys will naturally gravitate to that guy, and then it's up to that guy at that point to now take the reins of the team and take us where we want to go. But the quarterback position isn't the only one that can do it, but as we all know, that's the great ones, they can do it. Kind of following up on that question, when you look at things like arm strength, accuracy, consistency, Obviously, you want all three factors in a quarterback. When it comes to assessing them, though, which one are you looking for the most? That, that's, to say, like, one trumps the other, I mean, if you have a huge, powerful arm, but you can't hit a building with it, like, that doesn't do us any good. But if you're very accurate, but you can't make a field throw, that doesn't really help us either. So it's really, a, like, a holistic look at everything, like, who gives us the best chance when we take the field on Saturday based on their skill set to go win. Not everybody has to be the same guy but everybody has to have something that they give us that gives us a chance to go be successful on Saturdays. 
Is that a fair answer to your question? One, yeah, can you make the throws that we need you to make? Can you extend plays when we need you to extend plays? But the main thing for our guys is can you process quickly? We play fast. We force the defense to play fast, so a lot of times guys won't be in the exact right spot on the other side of the ball. Can you process what you're seeing and get yourself, your eyes, your body in position to make the throw that we need every single time? The ability to process quickly is as big as anything that we have physically that we need. So with, with four guys, you know, battling for a spot, mm -hmm. how, how do you, do you have to teach them to, to kind of guard against trying to win the job on every rep and still understanding that the smart play sometimes you're going to be graded right if you throw this ball away or, you know, you don't have to force this thing. Absolutely. Um, made the point the first day, like, there is not enough reps to go around right now. So in that, the natural thing guys will do is press exactly what, what you're saying. You're not going to win the job on one throw. You're not going to lose the job on one throw. All I've asked them to do is please go out there and throw the ball aggressively. I don't want to see guys out there just half-stepping in there, dropping it down, tentatively making throws because they don't want to lose the job. I want guys to go out there and just rip it all over the field, giving it everything they got, and then we can make adjustments from there. But if you come out there and you're, you're not giving it everything you got or you're playing timid because all you're trying to do is not lose the job, now we got to work to get that out of you and then make the corrections physically, fundamentally after that. So all I want them to do is go cut it loose and play aggressive. That's, that's it. That's all I ask. What have you seen so far when it comes to wide receivers and quarterbacks kind of being on the same page? Mm -hmm. uh, and what kind of work ethic have you seen, you know, outside of off the field in the uh, in the quarterback room? Yeah, the um, the QBs, wide receivers, it, it kind of goes with what we talked about is we are rolling guys through with a bunch of reps. So you're not getting all that one guy with one guy all the time rapport. But they worked their butts off all summer. They worked together all the time. So we have had pretty good timing, pretty good relationships between the two. It hasn't been a bunch of, like, we're just not on the same page. So in that, st uh, in that stance, it's really good. But we also understand as a staff that as we get closer and closer to season, you do have to get your guys that are going to be standing out there more and more and more reps together so you can be as dialed in as possible. Uh, when it comes to the off-the-field stuff, that was your other question? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's been great. There's, you know, times you're up here at 10 o'clock at night and you look out your office window and there's guys in there going through the call sheet for the next day, calling it on the field on their own, just quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs out there together. Um, literally that happened at 10 o'clock at night this June, just looked out the window and they were in there. So it, it's these guys understand what we're trying to accomplish. They understand the urgency of what we have to act to accomplish what we want to accomplish. You mentioned wanting to have quarterbacks making all the throws. Do all four of your quarterbacks have the ability to make all the throws? That's the first question. They do, yes. Uh, secondly, um, in terms of Brian Maurer, what progress have you seen out of him? Brian's done a really good job of, of digging into what we're trying to do um, and, and buying into how we're teaching it, how we coach, all that. He's, he's got a lot of athletic talent. He's got a lot of quick twitch. He's got a good arm. And he's done a really good job of trying to take in exactly how we want things done and buy into Coach Heupel's process and Coach Heupel's strategy and how he wants to play and let go of the, what he used to do. So he's done a really good job of, of accepting us, really, and allowing us to coach him in a different way than he's been. Joey, yeah, Coach Golish the other day mentioned that you've been kind of working with, with Joe on some things, some corrections that he needed to make. Could you maybe expound on what some of those things that, that you saw in his game from when he came into Michigan that you, you guys felt he needed to yeah. store up and correct when he got here? Yeah, he's absolutely, um, you know, that he was highly recruited coming out because he does have a huge physical talent pool. He has it, and it's been mostly just kind of refining some things with his feet. We are, uh, we're different than a lot of people from the last place he came from, more of the under center traditional drop back stuff than how we play. So it's not, it's been less about, like completely breaking him down. It hasn't been anything like that. It's been more fine-tuning him to how, how we operate and how we play. It's been, that's been his process. And he's, to his credit, he hasn't fought that one step. He's like, I'm in here. I want to be in. I want to do it how you guys want it. And he's bought it, and he's gone with it. You mentioned extending plays there a minute ago. Just how important is that in this offense? And through two practices, where do you think Joe Milton is in that? Factor. That's extremely important in this offense, the ability to extend, to create on your own. Um, with how we play, with the splits and the tempo, like stuff breaks down all the time. It, it just does. Your ability to get out and go and extend the play, does that mean you have to run a 4-4? No. 
It means you need to be able to think, to have quick feet, to have athleticism, to be strong, so you can step through some arm tackles, you can get out, extend a play, keep your eyes downfield, keep your composure, and drive a football where it needs to go when, the, when everything breaks down inside. So it's not like QB run game. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ability to operate when there's mass chaos going around you. That's, that's where I'm, I'm saying when I say that. You know, I, I guess that, that ultimately who plays out there at every position will, will, will be Josh Heifel's decision. But as the quarterback's coach, you know, being a month out or less from the season, mm -hmm. where are your emotions in terms of being excited that you've got a race for the spot versus looking at the calendar and saying, you know, we, we got to get this thing done sure. quick? I think it's always positive in fall camp when you have competition. Um, with that said, if you have competition at the quarterback position, that means you don't have a solidified starter that's played a bunch of ball for you. So there is that. We do understand that it's coming down to it about that time. So we are pressing both the guys, the coaching staff, to start figuring out who is going to separate themselves. And as that guy or two guys or three guys start to separate themselves, they'll see their rep count go up, and they'll see that they're getting more pushed to get ready for the actual game day on September 2nd. Thank you.